Just about anywhere you go in Cincinnati. Just about. Just, by the way, I just hiccuped in the middle of that statement. I've had beers. Wasn't Mar- wasn't Mark on this podcast to start? Where the hell did he go? Screw that. Let's chug beers. All boats raises all tides. I really, I really hope that your audience drinks while they listen to this podcast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, this is a fun one. This is, uh, I'm calling this episode 100 of Sonder Stories to appease True Fear Podsequences, who has been yelling about creating episode 100 uh, for like the last six months, I think, and you guys keep letting them down. Uh, so we're going to do it for them today. <laughs> this is uh, uh, this is Cincy Brewcast. This is the voice of Cincy Craft, if you're confused. Uh, also, I just realized that the intro music that's playing right now is the old intro music. I dropped that in when I was editing, and I, I, I'm, I'm such a mess. I love it. I'm here for it. <laughs> I haven't even talked on this podcast yet. My drunk statements have already come out. <laughs> you, it was uh, the most fun was sitting down and going back. That, those are all from the same episode, oh, which was yeah. Oktoberfest two years ago. Uh, you going, did it later in the day, right? Uh, I don't, don't remember. Don't, dude, even dude, if we no. didn't, tell me yes. I, dude, I, I'm, I'm telling you, it, it was about a lot the same time. <laughs> what, what happened, though, was that you guys uh, recorded an episode of Sonder oh, Stories right. right before. Like You yeah. guys wrapped up, and then immediately we sat down with a Oof. couple pitchers of oh, beer and just God, dove yeah. right back in. <laughs> Oh, I do man. remember that. Going back and listening to that episode and like just the isolated microphones from each person trying to find some clips to pull was oh the funniest thing that I have ever done. <laughs> I have a, I have a, this is a true statement and it's a little embarrassing. The only episode I never went back and re-listened to was that one <laughs> Me because too. I was like, I, I can't, like I can't Editing do it. it, I felt mm-hmm. uncomfortable. I was like, I, I was more buzz drunk than I would have liked to have been for that show. Dude, when you made the comment about the rising boats, uh, which is never that's I'll never ne- not. I'll never live that down and that's alright with me. <laughs> that's fine. Well, it's become it's become such a piece of like uh, my vocabulary now. Like the, the rising the, boats raise all tides the one and, I, the and one, I've had beers. The one I'm more proud of is the I've had beers. I'm good with that. That's, that's, at least, that's funnier to me. It's like I've had beers. It's like you're trying to uh, justify what you're saying, but yeah. in reality, it's like what you say under alcohol still counts. <laughs> if you guys didn't put it together, we're at Sonder for Oktoberfest, uh, Sonder and Friends Oktoberfest. Again, we have to always do a show here. This is, uh, uh, to me, one of my favorite beer festivals that happens every year, and uh, I, I, I couldn't imagine not doing a show here at this. So uh, welcome back, guys. Uh, let's run around the table. Everybody introduce themselves. Uh, even the people that don't have headphones, they have to... Uh, <laughs> Just shout into somebody else's microphone. <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> Mark Lord's from the Common. Was it Mark on this show? <laughs> yeah. I don't remember being on that show. Let's just be honest. But yeah, you apparently were, I really was not. present. Oh, you, of course I remember. You were on okay. the, like the it very beginning. Been, it would have been a fair statement if you would have said no. Oh, and then you, had to, you had to go like open or something like that. Oh no, I had to go <laughs> close the brewery that when, night. Oh, that was right. that was a, that was a shit show. Because that, that was like we like we like coordinated like a couple of guests. And then, like, everyone in the industry was like, let's do a podcast. We had, like, 20 That's people exa- on. And, yeah. they, and they were doing um, the or the the narrow path the guys stops. were doing the beer stop. Oh, yes. yes. That was yeah. that episode. And so we ended up drinking. Like, each of us had, like, six of them because they just wanted to keep showing people. And we were chugging And they were them. delicious. They yeah. were delicious. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for those that don't know, I'm Justin Neff. I'm um, uh, one of the owners and founders of Sonder. Uh, Brian Brownlow, BC's Brewing Company, formerly BC's Bottle Lodge. Coming soon to a theater near you. (laughs) Hey, when are you guys opening? Uh, my name is Danny. I'm the marketing director for right now. Ooh, oh, for, okay. for right now. For right now. I didn't oh. know what you were gonna say. There. I was waiting on it. Danny's got some cool things in the works. Uh, new roles here in the company. Yeah, you so. guys. You guys posted that you're hiring. A, a new Danny. Yeah, that's basically. right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, and then, oh, so see here, I was right I was actually going to say I'm message. so sorry, Danny, <laughs> <laughs> but you lost I, your I job. Had a, I had a couple of people reach out to me. It's like, 
what are you doing? Like, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm staying, I'm staying, I'm staying. I'm staying. It's a cool role. I, it'll be all good. <laughs> if, Dan, if Danny leaves, you'll just conveniently see my Jeep just slowly off. <laughs> <laughs> you're going you're gonna to have to ship me out of this place. <laughs> Did you, ship you out. Yeah. I, yeah. I heard others <laughs> just say <laughs> I heard something different. Here's the thing. I haven't had beer. I was trying this to make a post beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't leave, Saunders. Saunders shits you out. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, there's a few jokes I can make there that I won't. But uh, what are we drinking? Let's run around the table because everybody's beers look different here. Oh, you, I have, I have a fest beer. Uh, who's fest beer? I have a fest beer. A fest I have beer. no idea. Oh, you know, okay. <laughs> I thought he was it's like, a I fest to beer. Okay, it is a fest I've beer. I've had uh, several from different I've breweries. I don't, I don't know what, <laughs> All the I don't know what this fantastic. one is. It really yeah. is. Absolutely. All the offerings today have been... Amazing. I've uh, taken one sip of today, beer yeah. today. Yeah, same. Um, um, I, I, I actually shout out uh, Greater Project and the 5K this morning. We oh had 900 gosh. runners that was nice. awesome. uh, at 10 a.m., which is incredible. More than double of last year. Um, and, and I have never actually run it. And this, this year I decided I was going to do it. So ran the race. Then my son had a soccer game a couple miles down the road at oh 11. Oh, Lord. So I ran the race. I knew I had to keep a, a relatively fast pace so I could get done, then get to my car, then get to his game. And then his game was over, and I came back, and I just poured my first beer. I'm drinking a Sondra Oktoberfest. Um, but I did try the common fest beer that, that Danny has in his glass. Spoiler alert. Yeah, I fine. wish I wouldn't have done that. Hey, you're fine. <laughs> um, it's fantastic. But, uh, it is fantastic, and that's what I'll be drinking next. I have not had that one yet. I'm excited to try it. There's awesome. plenty of time. Yeah, uh, Sondra Oktoberfest. Hey, the there you go. About? He can't hear I'm that we the can't only hear him. One that can't hear <laughs> myself. I'm trying to be relatively you, quiet. You, what, you do this. It'll help. Check. 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 <laughs> uh, that is much better, actually. Yeah. yeah. So, so, tell so I'm, I'm currently drinking in uh, Sonder Oktoberfest. Uh, I had the uh, the Nocturnal Oktoberfest. Mm. I don't know what you want to call that mixture earlier. That was oh, awesome. Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, was that a Chad Blount special? That's his like cup no, of tea. No, 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 no. It, it, uh, it, He's one of those people that like he grew up when he was eight year old and like went to a fountain no drink and like hit all right? of them. Oh, Noctoberfest is it's a great It's got to be Noctoberfest. I like yeah. it. I like yeah. it. Uh, as Justin said, I have, our, I have our neighbor's uh, fest beer. Uh, nothing makes me happier than drinking a beer from Mason at being fantastic. PNG makes a beer? Ooh, yeah. Damn straight <laughs> they do. They probably could. <laughs> they probably could. There's, there's probably no somebody in there. It's, all, it's, all, small in batch. it's all small batch beer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm also drinking Sonder Oktoberfest. Um, I, this, is, uh, this time of year is like my by far my favorite time of year, but it's also kind of frustrating for me because I have all of this Oktoberfest in my house, and I'm afraid to drink it. Because if somebody moves into the bracket to a further level, and then I don't have enough of their beer, and then it's gone off the shelves, then I'm in trouble. So I'm trying to, like, I have to try to ration it out. And, like, it just becomes, like, this endless, there's this, just this pile of, of Oktoberfest beer. The fridges are full of it, and I, I just can't really drink any of it. So uh, I, the only Sonder Oktoberfest that I've had this year, uh, well, no, that's not true. I've been to the tap room a couple times. I've had it a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think this year? I love it. It uh, uh It's kind of drifting back closer to a, a, a Meritzen, which I like. You know, there's a lot of fest beers now, and I love fest beers. But for a long time, like, they were just kind of doing this middling thing where they were all kind of being their own little hybrid, which is which is fine. Um, but I like having the difference between the two around town, and this is, uh, this is a great one. The good but interesting feedback that we've gotten is that it's a smidge uh, hoppier, yeah. bitter... Um, Using those German hops. Yeah, but um, it's yeah, that's and that's what like, it is hoppier, but not in hoppier like the sense that I think everybody thinks of the word hoppy now. Like it's it's, exactly. it's earthy hops it's and like that. Like, it's, it's, it's yeah. noble hops. That's yeah. what yeah. you want to be right. using in a Martin. Yeah, it and, and I think I think to Gnome's point, because that that body of the beer is a little bit little bit more towards that that Martin character. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it balances that bitterness out. Quite it's well. fantastic. I love our October. How do you guys? How do you guys make that decision? Because I, I assume it's it's changing. Actually, the actual recipe is changing each year. It's not just my perception of it. But how do you figure out kind of where it's going to sit on that spectrum? I don't know if change is the right word. It's more evolving. Um, it's roughly the same recipe from year to year. But um, you know, if you were to talk to Chase or any of our brewers, they'll tell you that um, everything can always be better. Right. And they evaluate recipes um, from brew to brew and year to year. Um, and they just take a look at what they think could be better about it. Um, 
So I, I, don't, I don't know the behind the scenes of it. I just know that that's their overall philosophy. So, so generally speaking, this isn't always the case, but generally speaking, um, especially when it comes to a beer like this, like this is, this would be Chase's favorite beer that we make every year. It's the beer that if it were, if it could be year round, right? Like it's, it's, it's his baby, so to speak. So when it comes to this beer, I just basically trust that he's going to do whatever he thinks is, is best for it. And generally uh, by the time it comes out, um, he, he'll, he'll, he'll give it to us out of the tank and be like, and, and it's always the same, right? It's we'll get, Hey, Oktoberfest is tasting great this year. <laughs> yeah. Every time. It we, always is. I think we're just at the point with our our beer that we have full faith in those folks. We're not really sure. we're not even really giving our input as far as like what we want flavors or taste wise. Like we know that hey, if you're brewing this beer, we know it's gonna be good. Um, I was hoping it was some kind of meeting where everybody yeah. shows up in later hose and <laughs> sits around a table. <laughs> somebody gets up and draws like a graph, like a bell graph on, all right, here's the spectrum of Oktoberfest. Where are we going to sit this year? Oh, Speaking of that, Noam and I are I the only ones wearing later hose <laughs> None of the Sonder people are wearing later hose Very disappointing. I need, I, need re- Very. I, need, I need authentic ones. When I go to Munich next year with you, I'll get authentic ones. Sold. I'm still yeah. wearing my race gear. Um, that's my excuse. You I can sweat a lot. I wear later I think that was actually that? You your can excuse. Later <laughs> I think that was actually your excuse and your shame that you were just placing on all of us. I still had my racing. <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually run the whole thing? Damn. He had to to get to uh, Voss's game. Get there. There. Walking was not in play. I, I'm, I'm happy to tell you, I, I held under a 10 minute pace. There we go. That's so. Impressive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but to Danny's point, I ha- like literally. I'm looking at this like if I don't get back to my car <laughs> by 10:46, I'm not making Voss's game. You were doing the reverse math. I was. I, yeah, I think that's the best thing in the world that I'm good at is figuring out. It's like <laughs> I need to be X place and do X things beforehand. This is when I need to leave. Is that is that like uh, working the uh, the old map? backwards yes basically where, where you're just yes. trying to get the time to go down exactly yeah. we can't stop i've shaved <laughs> five minutes off of this we're not stopping I'm, I'm that dude in the car when i'm on a road trip it's like oh i'm gonna it's pee, like pee in a cup it's it's 305 I'm ETA. Stopping. i'm getting this to three like, <laughs> well I, you know the whole like the whole like navigation thing that's right in front of you on the screen makes it like a hundred times worse than it ever used to be because you can dude. see that number. It's true, and it becomes this like oh, and I'm every gonna, time you get, beat that. you get stuck behind like a slow car and you, you watch it tip. drop a minute. There's nothing more frustrating. Uh, I actually have a question. If it's all right, no, uh, uh, sure. I, I'm, I have a question for Brian. As you guys, and uh, I'll let you share whatever you want to share with this for those listening. But as you guys plan out BCs and you go to a festival like this, is there more? Is there more excitement for being able to be a part of it as a brewery in the future, or is it more frustrating as you go through the process and not being there yet? Right, like, which I, I it's not really a fair question, but I'm just, I'm just curious about that. I would say, uh, I guess, I think that's probably a two part answer. Um, the first part of the answer is I, I've always loved this Oktoberfest. Um, and I've been coming here every year. So for me personally, it's always been a good time, a good event to see people in the industry that I know and love. Um, am I disappointed that we don't have beer this year here? Absolutely. Uh, do I think it changes my experience? Probably not. As much as I would love to have beer here, I don't think my experience will change. Um, because I, I, you know, I'm, I'm watching the, the guys in the tents with their beer, uh, and I don't know that they're going to have as much fun as I'm going to have. I see. I'm having fun. I was supposed to say, actually, no. I, actually, I, I didn't know. I also didn't see you in the tents. I saw you outside of the tents. So. That's very true. I was uh, done. I was done with my prep. Yeah, work. right. I want to give Jess Green a shout out. Um, oh, 100%. She, she did yeah. amazing. I love she, Jess. She, the thing that I love about Jess is her interpersonal abilities to put herself in other people's shoes. And we've taken feedback from prior festivals and prior years, everyone brought their own jockey box, their own booth, and we spread you out. And it's still a very fun time. But to have everyone in their own little corner, it feels like a more fun day for the industry where you're hanging out with folks. You don't need to be tied to your jockey box all day. You can try other people's beers. Uh, I think it's a really, it's, you know, it's Sonder and Friends Oktoberfest. We're celebrating the folks that we have a great relationship with. And for them to come here and have a fun day 
and know that they're going to be excited about next year is a really good um, precedent to set. And I think her being as involved in events as she has been the last year has shown the importance of that, of people come and have a good time. And it shows in, you know, your attitude when you're having a good time and you're talking to people about your beer. Um, so I think the setup's great. You know, we're still working through the kinks a little bit, but. Um, oh, and she, she has a heart for the industry, right? So like, absolutely. she gets that, that putting those people together as opposed to isolating them in their own separate tents is going to make a better time for them. Well, it makes and it it makes it better for the drinkers too. Like the, one of the biggest things that people are yelling that they they want from their beer festivals is to be able to be with the people that make the beer or yeah. have something to do with the brewery and and in a fun way. Like they don't want to just like have somebody hand them a little taster cup and be like this is our Oktoberfest to well, taste like bread. Well, it's frankly like that's not what people want out of a beer festival. It's a big part of this event specifically for us too because we don't if, if you're if we invite you and you just say, "Yeah, we'll just send you a beer." We're not going to send anyone with us or not going to send a table with you. It's like respectfully no. Like the whole point of this is that we invite the folks that we have a relationship with and we want you to mingle with our customers that are coming and we want to interact with you and it's an interpersonal experience where uh we're not just trying to have beer for the sake of having beer here we want it to be a interactive experience for us but also for our customers and the people that we invite to come with us that that's wait, one wait, of the wait, wait, oh. wait 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 i want to go first okay <laughs> i agree with what you're saying danny and one of the things that is a struggle for owners of breweries is being able to get out yeah. And get to different breweries, even within your immediate area. Yeah. And I was just having uh, the conversation with my brewer, uh, Brandon, and saying, this, this is the kind of event I want to go to because mm -hmm. it gives me a, an opportunity within a very short period of time to see 22 different breweries yeah. and talk to owners and talk to brewers and talk to, you know, employees of those brewers to, to make that connection. It, it sounds corporate, but it's a great networking event. It, it's 100%. one of the things that that we have we have always stood on for this event. It's what it's what okay, we, honey, we I'm feel. networking. <laughs> this is a business write off, correct? <laughs> we were pretty bullish on that from day one. Yeah. That if you couldn't send somebody from your team here, we get it, but we're just we'll we'll, we'll pass. It's right? respectfully no. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and it's because we want this to be an event for all of us, not just. Uh, we're going to throw your beer on somewhere and, and not have somebody that can talk to it and speak to it. And because, you know, I think, I think you've kind of driven this home, Danny, over the last two years. But one of the things that uh, we, we've tried to make this is a craft beer Oktoberfest festival. And that means we're going to get some consumers who just want to go to a festival, but we're also going to get a lot of consumers who want to try everything. And the Passport this year, I'll let you talk a little bit about that as new. Yeah. Um, but what we're trying to do is gear this to people who want to try a bunch of different beer from all over town at the same time. Yeah. And how cool to be able to drink the common fest beer and the owners sitting here. Right? I'm, ha I'm happy we've been rigid about two things. One, you need to bring representatives here. Uh, and two, it needs to be German style craft beer. We're not pouring your double dry hopped IPA. We're not pouring your uh, imperial stout. You know, this is a craft German style festival. And I think I've said it on every show that we've done at this festival, but I genuinely have a hard time thinking that you're not in the immediate area, maybe not even the Midwest, maybe not in the country. You're not going to find a festival that has this many good German style craft beers that you can come and try. We have 21 breweries here. They all brought two brands. Um, you're not going to find a bad no, beer on the board over there. That's that's more than Oktoberfest Cincinnati has. Like that's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 especially it's, this year they downsized it's it. It's a proper, Oktoberfest, but like it, it Ugh. incorporates all these other aspects from festivals that I know that that people like. That it's just it just becomes this like all of these vendors you guys have set up now and stuff. If my wife would venture out of the house with the children, this is something that like would get her into the festival. She likes to walk around and look at you know whatever you know candles or whatever the hell that stuff is. You know, like she likes that. That's what she wants out of a festival. You know, my kids want to kind of run around a little bit and play. There's plenty of space for them to do that here. Like it's it just pulls in all of these different aspects that I think everybody can find something about it that they that they like. Uh, how how has there been a lot of pushback from breweries that like uh, want to come, but they're like, ah, I'm just I really you know I'll bring my, our Oktoberfest, but I we really need to pour our, our double IPI too. Like, is there a pushback on that, or do does everybody seem to get it? We uh, like I said, we we've been pretty, and, uh, we've been pretty on, rigid about it. 
on the the second part of that question, is it just that you pick the right breweries to invite also? Is that part of it? There's probably an element of both of that, right? Um, you know, there are there are certainly breweries, not just around Cincinnati, but but further out that that maybe we would love to have here because we have a relationship or know them, but we know that they're pro- they probably don't have a beer that fits. Right? Sure. And that's okay, too. That's totally okay. But to, I think what you were going to say, not to cut you off, no. but but genuinely most of the from the from the beginning now now we've done it for five years now so or four years so i think most people know what to expect but i don't maybe a couple early on would say well can i bring this and we would say you know to danny's verbiage respectfully no um but i don't think we i didn't manage it this year jess green did um but i i don't from my perspective, see a ton of pushback right. from uh, the other breweries. A really good example is that uh, our friends from the Dayton area, Ailmatic, uh, we invited them last year for the first time. They're friends that we have met at uh, GABF, um, uh, the Craft Brewers Conference. They're just folks that uh, they're a great time. And we invited them for the first time last year, and literally <laughs> they had one sixth <laughs> of Oktoberfest, was the only German-style craft beer that they had in their inventory. They came, set up a booth. That sixel was gone in like two hours and they stayed and hung out. Yep. It, it's like, we would have taken more of their beer if they had it, but they didn't have it. They still wanted to be involved. Um, I think this year, uh, Jess got out a front, in front of it where she you know, reached out to these folks very early. It's like, hey, hold stuff if you need to. Um, we're not sitting on that much beer from folks, but we have a lot of breweries here and uh, <laughs> Macy doing the Lord's work right here. Um, Gosh, she's thirsty. You're my hero, Macy. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Mace. What is this? <laughs> oh, fantastic. There may or may Perfect. not have been some back work to make this happen. <laughs> Thank you. Or Macy's Appreciate just you. a mind reader. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe both. <laughs> Future marketing director, Macy Cherry. Yeah, there you go. You're just you're you're teasing everything. Yeah, without, dude, without really. Actually, like yeah. by the end of this, we're gonna know everything. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think that uh, to, for this to be as successful as it is, we need to s- be rigid about a couple of things and craft German style beer and uh, bring representatives. It's just two things that we firmly believe in, and it makes makes this festival better for us. We believe. I think you're right with any any kind of beer festival that you want to put on like you you have to have your your rules and like here's what we want this to be and you can't make you can't make exceptions because then that the change is what you want it to be right yeah 100 percent. and so i i yeah i totally i support that i i understand i i get that and we've yeah. luckily gotten to the point where it's it's a non-issue it, it was it was a non-issue of people bringing representation this year and it was a non-issue of people bringing german style beer they get it we have a proven product um, it, it, it's Haley and I joke about this every year. It, the first year we did this, it was like four people planning it in 2019. I didn't sleep that week. Uh, I yeah, it was terrible and it was a fun event, but it was so much to put on. And here we are five years later, and we kind of meet once a month about it, and we all have our roles, and it just goes really smooth. And uh, it's fun to be in year five of this brewery, but year four in this festival. RIP 2020. Um, and uh, it's a proven product, and it just goes really well. It's fun to have folks here, and uh, I love seeing faces like Brian and Mark here. For the record, I was sitting out here in the field drinking, uh, <laughs> waiting for everybody to show up in 2020, and nobody did. <laughs> hey, permission to make a joke? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, it's not going to be funny. Hey, <laughs> as long as you're open next year, just make sure you save two uh, German-style beers. Yeah, for there you go. Festival, okay? <laughs> you're on the hook now. Brian, you're our first brewery that's invited to 2024. Sonner and Trans Oktoberfest. <laughs> hey. Mark, Mark, you're second. Hey. <laughs> so, sorry, Mark. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll be there. Perfect. We can't I, wait. Yeah, if we're not if we're not there, then I'll I'll be living in Costa Rica. Just so, just so that it's said into the mics, we're we're excited for you. Yeah. It's gonna be a lot of fun when you guys open your doors. Oh, we, I can't wait. All of Mason is excited for you. Yeah. Every Thank one you. of us is excited to get you open. We oh. I know we've said it multiple times. Um, but the more good beer we have in this area, the more folks we're bringing up to this area to enjoy really good beer. 
Um, Some would say what, that what's that uh, rising what's that rising, <laughs> I, rising boats I, I, do something with until ships. They ship me out. Is I was that, I was, was I was genuinely worried that I was going to say it right instead of the way that I said it previously. I knew someone uh, was going to make the joke. <laughs> rising shits make the toilet bowl full. full. Raises, this, is, full. this is the self conscious mind coming into play here. I'm like. There are probably hundreds of people that only know me via this podcast. It's like that fucking drunk guy from Saunders. <laughs> well, there's there's <laughs> no you say, make, making it, phrases up. I'm pretty funny. sure it was rising tide or rising boats raises all tides. It's all tides. All tides. All tides. Rising all ships tides. raises all tides. Is there a bridge around here? <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, like, uh, if people listen to the show and they know uh, just that Danny from that episode, and then they met you in person, I don't think they would make the connection. No, they probably the same not. absolutely would not. <laughs> probably they absolutely not. would not. I, I direct people to your uh, logger round table because I felt like I sounded smart on that one. Uh, that's the only time I've been on your podcast, actually. Hey, hey, Danny, I'm going to ask you behind a mic right now. Oh, boy. Uh, because Gnome teed it up. We're at episode 99 of Saunders Stories. Are we ever going to do an episode 100? Should we do a fifth year anniversary? I, I mean, I feel pretty confident that at some point we're going to do a 100th episode. For the, we, We've talked about this a million times on Saunders stories for those that listened. Uh, and for those two people, thank you. Um, I'm just teasing. Uh, What's Saunders stories? It, it's just, our podcast. Okay. Just check. Um, you've been on question. it, Mark. Thank you. You've, you've been on it a few times. Um, we like that Saunders stories was a side product that was almost like a hobby, a fun project for us on top of everything else we did for the company. The last year, um, a lot has changed. We've had um, a lot of shifting of roles and responsibilities and growth and other things that, that frankly, that Sonder Sorry's just had to kind of take a, a back that seat. Key, yeah. right. um, it's one of the reasons that we are now hiring a digital content creator, right? Because that person will hopefully be able to take the management piece of it away and, and being able to add maybe possibly an additional head to our marketing team that now that can be a actual part of their job and not just right. a side piece that Danny had. Um, and so it, it, it will at some point, I'm too passionate about it for it to just die. At some point it will come back, but we've talked about it a million times. When it comes back and when we continue to do it, we want to make sure that we do it right and it's consistent and we don't just drop one episode every six months. Right. Um, but I'm pretty confident it'll come back. I, I really just wanted you to say yes behind the mic. I actually so. might disagree with you. I think that if we, like, just dropped it when we wanted to, that would be kind of fun, too. It's like, what if we did an anniversary show? What if we did a family tradition show? Like, we, like, played the hits. I mean, I'm, I'm in. Yeah. I think you should do 10 minutes every hour hey, that you drop respect, a barrel. you didn't even know what it was. I don't think you get an opinion here, Mark. <laughs> what is Sonder Stories? <laughs> I love it, and it was really, really fun. It just became a logistical nightmare. That, For sure. Like, it, some things had to fall off the table, and it was one of the worst. Well, and, and I'm okay sharing some of that. I mean, we, 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 as we partnered with our distribution partners, who have been fantastic for us, as we continued to grow outside of the rate of which we expected to grow from that, our marketing team had to support them quickly right. with a lot of extra effort and work. Not that we weren't when we were self-distribution, but... We just did not anticipate the outside sales piece growing at the rate in which it did, and that took up a lot of the time of our marketing team. Well, oh, by the way, and a lot of my time as well, and Chad's team. And the three of us were the three that were represented the most on it, right? I get it. Like, there's there's some months where even me, where uh, the podcast is a big part of uh, who I am and what I do, but if there's a month where I'm busy with something, yeah. like, everything takes priority For over sure. the one thing that just it doesn't generate income it doesn't you know it's That's it's right. just this thing that that exists and so it's easy to just kind of push aside oh, we'll, we'll get it next week we'll get it next week we'll get it next week and then eventually it's like oh shit it's been six months yeah. Yeah. so i get it uh talk about how this brewery has grown uh, if you kind of uh look at the trajectory of how things have gone uh was this how you predicted things would be or no. um is there what what parts are, are different? What parts aren't different? Because when well, I when I look at what this has all kind of become, it all makes sense looking back at the very beginning. But clearly, the path to get there was a little strange. So <laughs> but, uh, thank you, COVID. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we stop we could, blaming <laughs> Obama. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so, we don't blame Obama. Are, are we supposed to blame Hillary? Isn't she behind everything? And not the 
Sure. I'm gonna, uh, sure. We're going to keep moving here. <laughs> uh, I think, so, so first and foremost, the industry has changed in five years. Yeah. A lot, right? In, um, what, in what ways? Well, the consumer. How much time do you have? Yeah. I mean, I mean, so, so I'll give you a, a I'm the like, same. <laughs> I'm still the same. You, you know what? You are, Noam. Um, and so am what I. What does that say about me? But, I'm not. Uh, I'm not evolving. You know what? I'm not either. That's fair. That's yeah. not, that, I'm that's not the, fair. I'm not the, cons- I'm not because the same I, consumer. Because I definitely don't care so much about variety like I used to. Yeah, that's, um, that's, and that's, that's valid. That's a, a very, you know what I want now? I want a beer that I know is going to be good every time I open it. I don't care to try 14 different bottles of a beer and be like, I like this one more and I like this one less. And I did like, I just want now, and I sound like the get off my lawn guy, but like, I just want to know every time I open a beer that it's going to taste the same and it's going to taste good. So follow on question to that. Yeah. Sorry, gnarly. Yeah, it's fine. Um, I'm finding now that I'm no longer going for those like very weird, quirky beers anymore. No, I want a, I want a crispy boy that's going to taste good. Man. Exactly. I, I go into a brewery off. right now and I want I want I want the best they have to offer on a style that I want to drink. I want two ounces of those quirky beers. Yeah, I still yeah. I still yeah. Right? Like, I want to try it. That's fair. Yeah, I want to taste the there. beer. I want to drink are those those crisp, clean, like. Styles standard really beers, good. yeah, like yeah. that. I could just be like, Oh, this is a really good beer, and I want four or five of them, yeah, right? I yeah. agree 100%. That's, but I, that's yeah. exactly I, right. And that, I feel that like right I there, was always that way. I feel like that's just that's why I said always I, I genuinely mean it when I say you, you pretty much are the same, known you a long time now. You right, genuinely right. are pretty much the same, years, <laughs> something, like that. something like that. I, uh, but but I, I think. Number one, that is the largest difference. That the largest difference now is that the consumer is shifting very much out of the the crazy milkshake, drop everything in it beers. They still exist. Those consumers still exist. Right. But but we were watching it gradually happen, and in in the last six months to a year, it's drastically happened. Drastically. It, it, and and part of Danny's new role. Um, here we go, Mark. We're just teasing even more of it. You ready? Damn it. Um, so. Let's just let the cat out of the bag. Danny's role, uh, I don't Rear. I don't know exactly the, the title, but it's director of business development. He's, he's moving on to outside of just marketing and into growing our business. Danny will be will be tasked with physically growing volume, profit, and revenue. And well, let me be let me be the twentieth person to say congratulations, <laughs> Danny. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. No problem. Um, I would like to be the twenty first <laughs> to say yes. congratulations. Thank I you. refuse to congratulate him because I do not follow trends. <laughs> <laughs> Buck the system. So, I, and actually, I've noticed that with you guys. Like, when's the last time you guys did a frosted? Uh, Ooh. Well, Ooh. stay tuned. Um, anniversary is going to be anniversary going to be really fun. But it's, it, I mean, two but years. It's, it's been a while, right? A year and, and that a half, was the thing. Two like, years. I remember all the frosteds. Like, just there were. I mean, there was a point in time where we were doing a frosted every six to eight weeks. It felt but, like. But here, and it's not. It's not because they didn't sell. They sold, right? They started selling at a little bit of a, a slower rate. But the bigger piece is, is Danny is able. We, we, we are fortunate enough in the fact that, that we purchase and have access to, to national and local data. And are, have a very strong relationship with Bart Watson and some of the folks in the Brewers Association. And the trends will tell you, man, 16-ounce cans, which is how a lot of these beers are, are packaged, outside of one very small pocket of the northeast part of the country, those beers are fading. Yeah. Consumers, first of all, they, they're not after COVID. This probably was a part of COVID. People aren't going to bottle shares anymore. They're not sharing beers. So that's a, that's a part. That's part of the industry change is, is the package format. Right. Bottles don't exist barely anymore, large or small format. Well, shout and out then, to Jason at Wandering Monsters. <laughs> <laughs> fair. And, and, fair. And, and, <laughs> And and they and the bigger part of that trend, we believe, is the style of beers that are packaged in those. Right? We all just said it, and and how, I mean, very. It, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but it is a very small piece of craft loggers in 16 ounce cans. Well, and so uh, right? or the 16 ounce four packs, which you know, to me, if you're gonna if you're gonna go that, which shout out to High Wire, uh, whose tent we are currently sitting under, uh, their fest beer this year was packaged. 16 ounce cans, but in a 16 ounce six pack, and I think that that's every that's the way to go. That is the way. That that's is the way that to go. Is, you really want to impress consumers? 16 ounce six packs. They'll buy you, it every day. I mean, who's gonna who's gonna say, "Well, I'd rather have these smaller cans"? 
two cans to fill up a stein. Come right. on. I, uh, <laughs> Sorry, the owner of the common <laughs> just showed up, so I'm going to give her a shout out. Majority owner. Is, is Mark Hello. in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> I'm always in trouble. It was, uh, it was nice seeing you, Mark. Uh, I, I think I will always be the person that I love visiting new breweries, and I want to I want to try your beer. Uh, like I, my girlfriend and I went to Wandering Monsters the other day. I had a great time. Did you buy um, some bottles to go? I did not. Uh, I, I'm not. How I many can you carry though? Like that's the other thing. Like how do you? I'm not. Like, how do you? <laughs> it, you need a four pack. Carrier. I'm, at, I'm at the point where like it's just more economical, and I know what I'm getting buying Sonder beer here. But like you will still find me in tap rooms. I bet it's cheaper too. It's do you think? Cheaper. Do you think new craft beer drinkers know how to open the bottles? Still? Like, do they have a <laughs> do bottle, have bottle opener? Openers? Like, do they carry bottle openers? Is that uh, the thing? Do they have whale slayers? Are whale slayers a thing? But I, th- but I think my thing is, is like, I'm just done getting burned on six packs. I, I think there's like, a lot of people who feel that way, man. It, it's just I, I, I know who to buy from. I know where to buy from. And, and look, I, we are fortunate in Cincinnati. We have a lot of good brews. Oh my god, we're swimming in it. But when you, but when you travel outside of Cincinnati, I, I mean, it's now. If if we're traveling and my wife and I are posted up at a hotel, I'll still go to a mix of six and I'll grab local oh, but beer. But it is but, the worst. But and you get back to your hotel room and you open it up, especially if you buy a six pack of something and you open it up, you're like, oh, and you're just like, God. <laughs> well, and I think that's that's the unfortunate part is that like tap rooms like BC's Bottle Lodge aren't aren't they don't exist. Isn't anymore. it the lodge at BC's? Or it is now. Yeah, okay. But like just what we used sure. to be was was a place where you could try those obscure beers and not have to buy a six pack. Right. You could buy a taster of it and see if you liked it and if you wanted to explore it. Um, I, I but those it. places are not I mean they're not growing. They're they're probably dying at this point, right? I Look, bought- a prime example, a prime example of this is the fact that 60% of our sales are two beers. You said 16? 60%. So so between Voss and Ubetcha, it's nearly it's it's right at about 60% of our sales. Right. And, and I attest that to our production team making a really good beer, our sales team being able to put that beer in, in accessible places for consumers to get, right? We, by the way, we have significantly more than two beers in market. Right. But, but people know what they're going to get every single time from Voss and You Betcha, and it's available year-round. That's, there's, there's a lot of factors to that, right? But, but those, that, that in itself will tell you consumers – Consumers are okay now just buying the same beer and keeping the same beer in their fridge. Oh, I buy not not that I'm a normal consumer, but I buy a lot of like single cans of stuff. I'm going and I'm grabbing singles of some new stuff you so I can the try minority. them all. You and are then, totally then I'm the turning around and I'm yeah. walking over into the aisle and I'm picking up a couple six pack of yeah. something that I know that I like, something that's consistent, Dude, something that's Oktoberfest. I, every year <laughs> lots of October. Every year because Oktoberfest is my <laughs> so favorite much, style of beer. So much Oktoberfest. So much. Every year I go to I go to a liquor store and I go to a box store and I buy every single Oktoberfest in a single format that I can and I just want to try all of them. Mm-hmm. But I bought a six pack of what I don't know as a fact, but I would presume is the second or third best selling Oktoberfest in the country. And it was the most oxidized beer I've had in the last year. It was, was just, it, was it was it, just, and it was just, made in the U.S. It, was just, it yes. wasn't shipped overseas. No, nope. it was made five hours away and it was just frankly second terrible. Or third. Like, well, but that's, I mean, like, You've got to send an email because they'll replace that, right? Like I don't think that's I don't think that's I, the, I totally get that, but I've talked to other people who have bought that beer and it's the same thing. What, which is probably a bad batch, right? Like that's unfortunate, but like I don't know that they. If you're saying the top top, by the way, this is a fantastic brewery that I would, right. That so I would like I don't know that everyone, they but, they meant that that got to market. And it's unfortunate it that it can, did is, because is, it's going to turn a lot of people off. When I'm getting burned by this cans? brewery, it's like to the point where I'm like, I don't even want to. Yeah, trust but is it is it getting burned or is it like they just fucked up? Like but they made a mistake. The well, I mean, like they would probably own it if you let them know that they were, like, hey man, this this beer is oxidized. I mean, you would own it, right? Like if you guys had a bad, we replace beer. We, yeah, right. We like, actually so double sure up they would on do beers. The, I bet they would do the same thing. It doesn't happen often, but if you get a bad bat or if you get a bad six pack of our beer, whether it's a packaging issue or on the shelf for too long, what if I don't like it? <laughs> that's a different issue, but okay. uh, but we still try our I mean, right. I mean, I would, I, I get, get behind that. Long. Like if, if we got it all, if I, we got I it all buy the you, time, it might be different. But but I buy you two six packs and a pint in the tap room. Wait wait wait. So all right, let let me bring us back on topic. Sorry. What, what's Again, the no. topic? The change of the industry. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. So uh, we, we all, some of us went to Nashville last year. I know you guys were busy with the second location. Uh, the keynote speaker last year, this is the first year in the history of craft 
the craft, the new craft brewery industry, that we saw a downturn in sales. So the question that the guy proposed, and it's a question I'll propose to you all as well, are we looking at a saturated market? Are we there? Because that would go towards what you guys are talking about as far as a person going into a store and knowing a beer that they want and buying that six pack and not looking to try anything new. I, I don't know that, that's a, that, that that exact example of what you just said is a saturated market. I don't know that it's not either, right? Right. I think there's a lot of factors to it. I'll, I'll tell you that because I've seen that. I wasn't in Nashville, but I've seen the presentation. Yeah. Uh, and, and they allude to this, right? W- what's also so beer is down. All beer is down, not just craft beer. Beer is down. What is way up? Craft beer is actually doing is performing worse than Mac. Correct. Beer. What? Well, so so seltzer was now it's declining. Now it's declining. Spirits spirits are up way higher than the the commensurate decline of beer, right? Huh. So spirits, I, I don't I don't believe we're in a saturated market. I believe that that consumers are using their dollars different. And well, by the way, that's going to also change when cannabis is legalized. Everywhere, it's on the docket in Ohio this Woo-hoo! year. The devil's I mean, lettuce. That's, that's, <laughs> I mean, so, so Mark, I, I would say, um, is there is there saturation? Of course, and there will continue to be saturation, right? You can see that just in the and the decline of breweries opening, right? Right. To be honest with you, I'm I'm pretty excited about where the industry is going, which is a different take than most. Um, I'm excited because I just like the consumers are getting more educated on to what good beer tastes like. Oh, I'm, I'm with you 100%. And, and, I, and I, I would is, say that w- with a very comfortable feeling that that I, I'm established, you are established. Hell yeah, man. I'm drinking this Fest beer, and it's going down like water. Right. It's, it's great. It's awesome. Right. And, um, I, so I think it's twofold. I think that it's an on-premise and an off-premise conversation because – when you look at the numbers, the box store numbers of craft beer are down, but the numbers of people visiting tap rooms is not down. So I think the neighborhood breweries, the local breweries, um, if you're making good beer and you're creating an atmosphere that people want to come to and hang out with, um, you actually don't even really need that kind of beer. If you have like average beer that people will drink, but you have a great atmosphere. Well, box stores well, are overwhelming at this point, right? They don't exist, hold though. On, hold on. Like, there's, like, they're... Hold on. Oh, yeah. I haven't made my second point yet. Um, I didn't get to make so, any so, points. So, again... Danny turned us off. You told us to be quiet. <laughs> Hurry up, Danny. <laughs> again, so there, there's probably too... and there, all that shit. There's too much, there's Aren't too you a marketing guy? There's potentially too many options in a box store, but there's not, there's, fired, there's not... There, there are not too many <laughs> neighborhood breweries. Great. I, that is correct. I, I, I don't I don't I agree. I don't Amen. think we are at a surplus of neighborhood breweries Amen. that supply really good beer. We are potentially at a surplus of people that are packaging beer and trying Large to sell it distribution to breweries, right? So, that's where yeah. I'm that's, at. So it's, it's, I that, it's, that is where I was hoping the conversation was gonna go. Because I agree with but you. But let's also realize that alcohol is cyclical, right? Like people float from liquor to beer to wine to liquor to beer to wine to liquor to beer to wine and like that's that's not an unusual cycle for this alcohol industry. Like that that happens every five to ten years. Well that that proves Danny's point, right? Yeah. That that proves the point of there's have you guys ever heard somebody go, damn, another bar is gonna <laughs> serve wings and <laughs> wings and beer. Damn it. You've never heard that, uh, right? Twice. It's a, <laughs> you, you never hear that, right? There will always be a place. I've said this on your podcast, I've said this on ours. There will always be a place. For the neighborhood bar that makes their own beer, there well, will always be a place for that. And I the think part, the part that gets a little bit sweaty is that shelf space outside of your brewery, tap handle space outside your brewery is finite. Sure, and, and it's competitive, and, and it's very competitive. And you have to have, in my opinion, and I set. It also we, might not be more competitive anywhere than right here in this. That oh, dude, in Cincinnati, I mean. Look, I mean, your people, you know, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Draft Magazine, uh, Tourism Inc. or whatever. When do you have time saying, to read all those? <laughs> well, I get, I've been I get a lot of years, alerts to my phone, Mark. Fair enough. Well, it's well, on while Audible, he's running. <laughs> so uh, if you want to just listen to it. But they're all telling people to go to Cincinnati for beer, Right. They're all telling people the number one craft beer destination is Cincinnati. That's why I'm so damn proud of what we're able to do in this city. Right. Well, think about think about this for a second. Why does Highwire, a brewery from Asheville, which is like kind of beer mecca, come to Cincinnati to open a tap room? Because we have great consumers. They really like city. playing cards. Be- what'd you say? I said just because they really like playing cards. Bicycle, baby. They like. Play- 
the, the, the <laughs> card factory. It was. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what, what, we're stoked to have those wow. people, by the way, because <laughs> that was layered. Well done, no. Well done. Was pretty Here's the thing. Simple, like, of all the places you could choose, of all the places you could choose in the country, right? Like Highwire has, they can they can go wherever they want. Why do you choose Cincinnati? Because you got beer drinkers in Cincinnati. Right. I actually do think it's bold to open a brewery here in Cincinnati if you're not making beer here. Well, and not local. It's well. So here's the thing. Bold and, and is a very seen... interesting way to put it. I I think it's almost like it's. Uh, Ooh, use it. Uh, use the word because I, I have a word. Use it. I don't know. Like it's like this this ego thing. Like that they. Uh, Ooh, that's not what I would have used. Aren't they just a bar then? Aren't they just a bar? I if don't know. Not I take here roughly. That's that's a. I mean, I take it as a that's compliment. Amy Lortz, by the way. That yeah. wasn't. I didn't mean that. As an you're not going to get a. No, gin. no. I'm saying. I'm saying <laughs> no, you didn't introduce yourself. Yeah, you're you're, you're not going to get a gin and tonic at their tap room, but you're going to get all of the beer that they make. That's I think the owner I think, of the comment. Actually, you will I get a gin and tonic I think you can get at a their tap room. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. yeah oh, you, you, get, you get that. You get a rum runner. I didn't know they had a rum How did I just become an employee in this fucking conversation? You introduced yourself, bro. Good point. I just really. I said majority owner earlier. I really hope that I walk into high wires sometime I, and brian's sitting there with a rum runner i take it i take it <laughs> big like umbrella sticking out of it i no. take it as a compliment as a brewery oh, in so, cincinnati so the, yeah. word, the word i was going to be the word i was going to use is flattering Ooh. i think i think it's i, think I it's, see i think it's the opposite i think it's almost almost insulting to think Ooh. that you can come from outside of cincinnati come in put in a, a bar that serves your beer and be like hey where's cincinnati too like it's like, oh, it takes a little bit more than that. Like you can come. I think it's unsophisticated. Uh, it's gonna take right? you a while like before they we accept don't, you. They don't. Uh, man, I think once people figure it out, like they're drinking local, right? Like local has made a huge stride, where it's not about. <laughs> but you even, don't think so? But even yeah. even. Uh, <laughs> even uh, uh, give me a mic. Oh, oh, you know. I messed that oh, up. Sorry, sorry, that's sorry. on me. I'm sorry. No, hey, if you that, guys hear that sizzling, can't be the first time that's happened. did I fuck something up? No, but I think there's beer in my butt crack. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Danny will <ooh>. get it. <laughs> wow. I think. I think. Wait, did that, I make her leave? Is she leave? Yeah, she left because of you, dude. <laughs> Golly, <laughs> Justin. <laughs> there's a microphone right there. Right Come here. On. This is a no, short. This is a short cable. <laughs> you spilled a beer all over. <laughs> if. If the mixer starts no, making no, noises, no, 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 then we have a problem. That, not <laughs> so it's not going Justin, out. say what you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mark. <laughs> yeah, why is this microphone out of the stand already? Because it's easier if you're just grabbing the mic and talking and not pulling the whole stand. What is this, your first podcast? <laughs> Standing up? I don't even remember what I was going to say. Everybody, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I think that uh, we were talking about insulting versus flattering. High wire, as, uh, high wire entering up. our market. I understand what we were talking about. I just yes. had something really good to say, and now I lost it. I think it that happens. like we, we even saw it with uh, with Muller Brew Barn coming into the old Rivertown space. Nobody ever accepted them. They were making beer there, but they weren't really... I don't think anyone actually knew they were there. Uh, that Why? Because I, I, don't, I don't know that anybody ever talked about it, right? Like, it some wasn't... people did. Some, right? But it wasn't. A. Why? <laughs> a, it's not. It's not the best area to open a brewery. B, it's not the best area to buy an existing brewery that was overfunded in an area okay. that didn't uh, didn't need it. <laughs> but in the time since March first took over Fig Leaf, that brewery has only gotten better and and more accepted and busier. They marketed it better. Okay, so there's something to make it happen. Well, yeah, but like when when I've never seen anything about <laughs> get a mic, Justin, get a mic. Okay, oh, he's making I, okay. me nervous around okay. all these yeah, like, I'm gonna spill sitting some water there. now. <laughs> I, I had somebody tell me something right before we opened up, and this goes back to our conversation of 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 neighborhood bars and there there being plenty of room for them. Versus but Muller Brewery was not a neighborhood bar. Right? Hold on a second. Hold on. So right, that's a massive. You're you're right, but but I had somebody who I consider a mentor to me. Tell me early, early on, decide who you're going to be as a company. And if you want to be a place that's a neighborhood bar that makes beer, and that's your business model, great. There's plenty of room for good. There's 12,000, by the way, 12,000 breweries outside of the U.S. Okay? 12,000. Outside of the U.S., just everywhere. So... The world? No, there's, there's. Are we talking so, about the world? I'm gonna mess this number up. I've okay. had beers. There's <laughs> how many? There's, <laughs> how many beers have you had? My my point. It's in a very. I think it's. I think that number might just be Europe. Like okay. I'm not kidding. Hey it's, Siri. Yeah, seriously. It's, 
Somebody's going to fact check this, this and then I'm going to get, I'm going to get, I'm just <laughs> waiting <laughs> on that thing that cancels me. This might be it, right? I'm very familiar with fact check this. So uh, my number is going to be wrong somewhere. Uh, let's just say this. There are a lot of breweries in Europe I that don't that. distribute anything, that are neighborhood pubs, right. right? And they have existed for hundreds of years and will continue to exist. That'll be fine in the U.S. as well, right? Per capita, we'll be fine, right? The problem or, or the risk or the concern or whatever doomsday words you want to use is when you're a brewery like ours, where you rely on a high percentage of your sales being outside of your tap room, and you have debt that offsets that, and you have all the business things about it, is that you have finite tap handles, finite shelf space, and finite ways to get it there, right? Right. And so I, my mentor told me early on, look, man, if you're going to be what your business model calls you to be, you have to have really good beer, a really good brand, and really good distribution. And if you do all three of those things really, really well, you'll be fine. But when one of those slips you might be in trouble, especially in the, in the industry we're in now, right? right? In the way we are now. That's why everything we do, we put, we put through the pillars of our company and do those pillars align with each of those facets of our business. We invest in marketing to make sure that our brand is as much out there as it could possibly be. Yep. We invest in our distribution partners and when we were self-distribution, our team to make sure it's out there as much as it could possibly be. And obviously... From day one, finding Chase and being able to invest in our beer is, is, is top priority, right? So right. all of those three things, if, if you're going to be a business like ours, those three things all have to matter, and they have to matter the same. Do you think a business like yours could open in today's market and be successful? It would be, it would be yes. It would be different. Lending organizations are different now, right? Banks aren't lending money like they used to. Interest rates are different. Like, things look different. See, do I think, I think, it, I think, do I think our really business difficult. could exist? Hell. No, no, I'm not saying not your business. I'm just saying, do you think a brewery could open today with, like, goals or aspirations of, I want, I want large distribution, um, I want a solid tap room, and I want, I want good marketing, right? Like, those are the three pillars. It, I think the distribution listen, piece man, is listen, a really it's hard all, thing to get. For a new brewery to, to I, I honestly think you're the last. I think you're one of the last breweries in Cincinnati to master that well, distribution a, piece. It's a good question. Because I don't think the market can handle or wants to handle. I, I, that's the bigger piece. I don't think, I don't think a consumer, th at this point, I think Danny's right. Consumers will always find tap rooms to go to. But I think a lot of people have made their decision up when they've gone to the grocery store what beers they're buying. Yeah, for sure. Right. So if you're the new guy on the block in that in that channel, can you and how a how do you crack that? Um, because there's so many vying for it now, right? Because it's like it, it's very limited. It's very limited space that that all these large breweries or are like I want I want my cut, my cut, my cut. I just I think it's really hard for a large brewery to. I, I think you're the last. I you, think you, you might be the last. You need a like, I'm especially about, like, in the Cincinnati, big guys. right? Like I don't I think, think I don't think anybody it. could open and com could compete in that space anymore. It's supply and demand. If you are creating a good product, uh, to Justin's point, the three prongs. If you are supplying a good product, a good experience, and a good brand, you're going to succeed because we are approaching from a not from a on-premise perspective, but from a off-premise perspective where shelf space is competitive and tap handles are competitive, like Justin said. We are approaching the point of good beer mattering, where a lot of probably five, ten years ago, brand mattered a lot, and whether you knew someone mattered a lot. We are approaching the quality of beer mattering only on the shelf space and the tap handle perspective. Where if you're a local brewery and you're a neighborhood brewery and you're making beer uh, and it's good, you're, you're going to succeed. But I don't think that. Well, even if it's not good, it's a slow, you're going to succeed, right? It's a slow burn. Yeah. You, you can't open and expect to be distributing in uh, three states tomorrow. Uh, you need to be growing at that perspective of we're meeting the demand in our backyard, and then we're growing to distribution areas that are seeking good beer. That's why we've been slow. I mean, people view us as this big brewery here in Cincinnati, but we sell beer in... Northern Kentucky, not Louisville or Lexington. 
And Columbus and Dayton are probably, I don't want to put numbers behind it, but. I don't think you've been a, slow. A, a I good think you've been of really business. smart. Like, I think but you've been, we, we, we've we've been nev- intentional we've, where we've you're We've never going. neglected our backyard. The, we, the, we, we've always been saturated here, and we, we will forever be saturated here. We never want to lose focus on the people that have supported us from day one, who have bought our beer from day one. This is, my, this is my business development guy talking now. It's no longer marketing. <laughs> we, we are, we are, we are, Amy, we are, just to bring you up to speed, Danny has a new position <laughs> as and, of this podcast. Uh, I'll, be, Saunders, I'll be taking shit over right out. Saunders Marketing <laughs> in, uh, what is it, February? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you're not getting the passwords. Uh, <laughs> Damn it. Uh, uh, I, I think it's more along the lines of uh, you need to be in it for the long haul to do what we've done. Uh, I don't think anyone's arguing that, but I don't think anyone can do what you have done. If they started today, I think that hill would be so much harder to climb. I don't think it's any harder. Oh, it's I think, so I think it's been hard, hard as shit for five years. No, I'm not saying it's been easy. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to discount what you guys have done because what you have done is is awesome. But I also think you are the last of a local space to do that and you're talking specifically in cincinnati so specifically cincinnati right no um, one no one's really opened in the last yeah. few years trying to do what we've been doing. why i don't know the, i don't i think it would be suicide to attempt it's lofty. what you've done it's right? it's lofty and every single person that has signed up to be a employee team i, I shouldn't have said employee i'm sorry uh team member here at sonder uh they've taken on these lofty goals from our three owners and yeah, this is the way we open. This is and, the way and we plan. I want you to know, I say this with nothing but admiration I, I agree. in my heart for what I, you have done. Like, I, did, I just don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that someone else could do it's it. It's never out of the realm of possibilities, but it's but damn we, near impossible. We even, we even it, see, like... It would like, take a lot. I will tell you this. I will tell you this. I think, I think, and maybe I'm wrong, I think it would take a lot more money to do it now. Not, not that... Not that I mean, we fought and clawed, to Dana's point, we fought and clawed for everything we Aren't could we two years through a money? pandemic. That's yeah, what I, heard. I, will, I will tell you, <laughs> yeah. that would, that would have been my response. It. It's going to take a lot of money and, the and a lot ac- less debt. Accepting of the fact that there's not going to be as much income, like a lot of losses over a many years to do what you've done. If you go on Facebook, sure. they'll tell you we're rich. Oh, dude! You <laughs> go to our go to our tap room. I'm, 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 like, you print money. I'm, I'm, I'm back swimming in hundreds. So. Danny <laughs> Harold's watch right now. Yeah. Show it off. Show it off for the crowd, exactly, Danny. Yeah. Let's see it. No. <laughs> Raise your wrist up, man. Dude, that thing's baller. Eighty-two <laughs> percent of my clothing is Sonder swag. Yes. It's just like, hey, Danny, when we order those, make sure one of those gets in my desk. Okay. But we we we. We've seen, too, like other large breweries in Cincinnati that have kind of started to back away from distribution being as much of their, their business, trying to figure out how to, how to kind of rein all that back in. Uh, to me, that's a, that's a clear sign that it's it, really hard. it would be really hard. For, if it's hard for them, who they've been playing this game for that long, we, we, are, it's still, we, are, really, we are really fortunate. Um, and, and this didn't come without a lot of work, but... We're really fortunate that we have such a great relationship with our distribution partners. And and again, that's a full-time job in itself, Chad will tell you, right? Sure. It's 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 managing that relationship. But at the end of the day, you know, again, this is part of where our model shifted. We we were self-distro till we die, right? And and we got to a point, man. Uh, it was as, just a house of cards. Yeah, man. And, and one and, delivery driver calling in sick, and all of a sudden, our president or director of sales are making six a.m. deliveries to yeah. bars. It was unsustainable. And, and that's because you've you've got rising fuel costs, and you have to pay for your fleet, rising and you have ships to and, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, boats, it's, <laughs> boats. And so and, and so we looked at that, and we said, look, I understand where the industry was here and where we are today. If we grow at this rate, we will offset any margin loss from partnering with them, but we have to partner with them. Right. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of, this is a very polarizing topic um, and it's a tough topic and we're not gonna go into it, but there's a lot of discussion about the franchise law and all the stuff and the reform and, and partnerships with dis- distributors and, and all this stuff. And we're not getting into that, but I will tell you, we work very, very hard to make sure that our wholesale partners feel like they are a partner to us. Right. And they're not just somebody, much like we talk about Oktoberfest, right? 
we want people to show up and pour their beer and talk to consumers and be a partner with us. Right. Same, we expect the same thing from our team with our distribution partners. We're not just going to ship them beer and expect them to sell our beer without us partnering with them to do so. I think the scaling back of distribution is an efficiency game. Like, are 100%. you, are you going to sell eight kegs in 20 counties? Or are you going to try and sell 50 in three? You know, right. it's like, are you going to, are you going to get people to know who your brand is? And are you going to get people to be familiar with what your beer is like? Or are you just going to try and like mix in a couple of kegs here to meet your number? Right. It's, I, I don't know. I think we've been very bullish on the, uh, the places that we distribute to and smart about where we go to. Um, and, and, and again, it's we've been open for almost five years now, and people think we're this biggest brewery in the world, but we distribute in like 75% of Ohio and then like a little bit of Northern Kentucky. Did you just say 75% of the world? 75% of Ohio. Oh, that's different. <laughs> a lot different. You guys are still big. <laughs> for like, sure. There's something, there's something beyond Ohio? <laughs> there's something beyond Cincinnati? <laughs> <laughs> I hear there's a city up north. I've, I've is, heard that. There's one. <laughs> it's pretty one. dirty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, Gnome, any more brain busters? No, yeah. no. Well, let's wrap things up because you guys have to go like hoist steins or something. Um, oh, shit. Is that soon? Yeah. That's a movie? I think. Isn't there something at two? Yeah, I should probably get uh, some, I got like like a, a volunteer. Thing, right? we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Isn't there a frosted something? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, let's talk about family traditions. Nope. I, I want to say something. Though. Well, wait, we haven't uh, wrapped up the Danny conversation. Like, it's the end of the episode. Oh, we've hinted. There we are. Yeah. Right. Okay, fine. Finally announced. <laughs> Mark's had beers. I've too. had beers. <laughs> Just say. Um, no, I, I would tell you, we, we've talked a lot about, about Cincinnati beer, and <laughs> and it's a, it's, it's a competitive, challenging market, everything else. It's also an awesome market. It is, and that's it's what I was going to say. Market, I wanted, to, right? I wanted like, to like go the opposite direction and say, "Damn it, I love like this day. This is my favorite day of the year as it pertains to our company because I get to hang out with Mark and I get to hang out with Brian and I get to hang out with you and I get to hang out with the, the Third Eye guys and and whoever else is here." Right. right? The, Danny mentioned the Elmatic guys. Those homies are just like dudes that we like, right? And and we get to do that. We well, are fortunate. That's the thing. Like if you if you opened up a brewery uh, in Dayton uh, today and you made a really great brewery and you started killing it in Dayton, it's, it's awesome. But now you have to be a brewery in Dayton. You don't get to be part of this thing that is happening down here in Cincinnati. There's not there's not great breweries in Dayton. There's there's a couple up there that are that are pretty good, uh, but <laughs> but. It's wow. still Dayton beer scene. Like just, it's just, just it's, wow. it's, it's it's not Cincinnati. <laughs> no, it's, it's a it's, suburb it's a, of Cincinnati. It is definitely. It's an suburb. absolute great industry to be it in. It will be. And we've been in two weeks longer than Sonder over the last five years. Oh, bragger. And no, the only reason I say that is is it's been an amazing ride for us, as small as we are, to get to meet the people we've met to get to uh, be a part of an industry that truly is supportive of each other, like, it doesn't exist in any other industry. Right. Wait, there's two things. So, one, our, in 2018, there, we both opened. And that whole, in that, you know, we were open October, November, December. Our best sales day was the day that Sonder opened. Yep. And we were like, oh, we're going to be That's dead. That's so cool. I've never heard that. Yeah. I just look, I got actual goosebumps. <laughs> we were like, oh, we're going to be dead. It's Halloween weekend, so there's Halloween parties and Sonder's opening. And then we were slammed. And it was all the people that couldn't well, <laughs> get into your opening. Well, just, <laughs> by the way. Since I'm in Mason, I I'm might like, as well go to ta- all I'll take, <laughs> I'll take your sloppy seconds. I'm fine with that. <laughs> something, that <laughs> something that hasn't been said that should be said is that a big reason why we do this festival is because we do want to build up this that's right this amazing community of beer and if you sit at the bar and you come up to Mason to have a couple craft beers and you ask our bartenders where where we should go we're sending them to come we do and, and we, we actually <laughs> say that and it's like hey Absolutely. you want a good beer that's 2 minutes away these folks make great beer i i think that uh, it, this is a competitive space, but it's a space that you can, we can all win together. And it's fun to have really good beer in this community. The Common is a great <laughs> example of that. BC's hopefully will be eventually if they ever open. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a question. I get it. 
I, it's actually the best sandbox I've ever played in. Yes, yes it's true. <laughs> Absolutely. It's true. That's actually a really good way of saying it. I, I mean, so Brian and I have been outside of outside of now he's opening a brewery. He's at a bottle shop. But even even outside of that, Brian and I have been very good friends for many years. It's not that many and bottles we try, anymore. It's not very we're not very successful right now because he's Recently, like trying to right? open a brewery. <laughs> but we try to get together every week and literally just do life together. Right. And we're in the same industry. We don't. We don't generally when we're together. We don't even talk work. Like it's mo- it's mostly life, right? How's your family? How are your kids? How are things? And and we do it like we were at the common the last time we were together, right? Like it wasn't like I'm gonna go to BC's or or you come to Saunder. It was like hey, let's go to common. And Mark happened to be in Montana and couldn't have a beer with us, but but it's what he good said fishing, yes. really good fishing. <laughs> he sent us a picture. But, but my point is, we're all about supporting this community. All of us are. That's why we're in this community. Right, right, and that matters. It does matter, and, yeah, and, and that's it, why I say I think it's the best sandbox I've ever played in. Right, like damn straight. You come from a corporate background, and the sandbox is like, go die. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, having multiple places making good beer up here results in more people coming up here. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Rising yeah. boats. Think, <laughs> think about <laughs> rising, rising boats. Rising all sandboxes. Out of <laughs> Put it on my gravestone, Mark. Put it on my gravestone. <laughs> Uh, How have we not made a shirt? That's all I need to do. Put it on my gravestone. But but again, it's you know if you're having a conversation of like, hey, let, let's beer hop today. You're not going to do it in Mason if you only feel like you have one good place to That's go right. to. Yeah. But if you have well, yeah. three or four, so or five, look at look at 42. Exactly. So we have 16 lots, Warped Wing, us, and then BC when they whenever they open. So it'll be in this amazing. And Sonder. Uh, well, but I'm talking about just on 42, and yeah. then and then one of us will be like, "Oh, you've done all four here. Now you need to go to Saunder." Yeah. yeah. But it's I love that, and people are like, when Warped Wing was opening, we had a lot of people coming in saying, "Oh, are you okay? <laughs> are you guys worried?" I was like, "Are you kidding me? I'm so excited." Bring more it, people up here. Do they, it do they make energy. beer? There? I don't know. Do they make beer? They don't yes, make, they don't. Yes, make they do. O O L C B. They do yes. make beer there. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yes, thank you. <laughs> I do have to yes. take off here. All right, yeah. Let's uh, let's wrap it up. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, if there is there anything you want people to know about Sonder, you think they don't know? No, just thank you for having us. Yeah, uh, appreciate you. I, I would like everyone to know they're the last giant. I, Thanks, I second that. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> I refuse to follow trends, so I will not say anything. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back next week. Uh, Thanks, no, we love you. Thank you, you guys Cheers. very much. Everybody, uh, everything's in the show notes. Links to things and places that you should go Cheers. and drink beers. We've all had um, beers. Prost, everybody. Um, Thank you, Nome. If you really like what I do, go to the gnarlygnome.com slash support. Uh, you can give me money there, and it goes right to me, and then my wife is happy because uh, money is coming in. And we're smiling for a selfie while well, I'm trying to do the outro. Cincy Brewcast, the voice of Cincy Craft. 